How you gonna make your way in the world when you weren't cut out for working? You start a podcast. Welcome to the Heart of Markness, episode 26. And for episode 26, we're going to keep on rolling with the Valentine's Day show of uh, last week, 1975, Valentine's Day, Uniondale, New York. Why? Two reasons. There are still more songs from that show that I want to play for you. And I got some real love from last week about how good the show was and how good it sounded. And it does sound very good, and it is excellent. So why not keep going, right? Excuse me while I cough. (coughs) Sorry about that. I felt it coming on, and uh, there was nothing I could do. So why should we keep futzing around? Let's just jump back in. Now, as a brief recap... In case you didn't listen last week, in case why, then, you know, why, 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 why would you listen to this one? If you haven't listened to last week's, so you're going to jump into part two. You're not going to know what's going on. Do you even know who Led Zeppelin is? How can you unless you've listened to the previous podcasts? This is sequential. This is episodic. You can't just jump in. You'll be lost. Not true. It's just music. So if you haven't listened to last week, don't worry about it. Listen to this one, then go back or don't. You have free will, unfortunately. But that will change once I'm in control. (sighs) So, last week we listened to some wonderful shows from the Valentine's Day soundboard recording of the 1975 show in Uniondale, New York. And this week we're going to listen to more. Well, actually, we're only only going to listen to one more because I have a surprise for you. But in order for it to be a surprise, it has to be towards the end. And in order to get to the end, we have to get through the beginning So let's soldier on, and with a mere two minutes and change of chitter-chatter before jumping into the first song, let's listen to In My Time of Dying. Now, this was released as a brief reminder. um, I'm sorry, this wasn't released. This was uh, February 14th, 1975 in Uniondale, New York, and it's uh, a full 10 days before Physical Graffiti is out. So these are new songs to a new audience. I mean, people I think had heard Cashmere on the radio, maybe Trampled Underfoot, but I mean, even if they had heard In My Time of Dying on like a a, a play the record through on the radio kind of thing, it wasn't ingrained in them yet like it is now with us. So imagine being some of those happy few who got to actually witness this performance firsthand and see these young men up on the stage playing this stuff for the first time ever hearing this music and uh, enjoy it. It is dynamic. I'm not a huge fan of In My Time of Dying live because, main, well, a couple reasons. First of all, Jimmy's slide guitar playing is about as good as mine, and I haven't played a guitar in two solid years. And if I picked one up now, I bet you I could pull off, I could definitely pull off the intro to In My Time of Dying right now And I could probably, within an hour and a half, be able to play a passable bar band version of that song. Why? Because it sucks? No. Because it's easy on the guitar, because Jimmy's not a slide player. And Jimmy, Jimmy's gift is to go for substance over... No, that's not right. Jimmy's gift is to play wonderful music without it having to be complicated. That doesn't mean he doesn't play complicated shit. He totally does. But things like uh, In My Time of Dying, guitar-wise, it's not it's not a guitar, oh my god, great guitar song. It it, it makes um, you know, it makes Joe Perry sound like Dwayne Allman in comparison. It's it's the the thrill of In My Time of Dying is the goddamn drumming because Jimmy miked Bonzo's drums perfectly and it is so powerful and so loud I can listen to all 11 minutes of it every time with my eyes closed and just listen to the drums and in the live recordings most of the time the drums don't have that same sound even if Bonzo's playing it wonderfully it doesn't have that same mm because it's not miked the same it's not a studio recording and this recording however it is um it's wonderful. Maybe because the song is new, so they kind of stick close to the record version. 
Not that they really did lots of, you know, variations of it. Um, maybe it's just because it's a great night. Maybe it's because, I don't know, maybe I was just receptive to it when I heard it and I said it's not bad. Um, in any case, I think you're going to enjoy it. It is In My Time of Dying, uh, February 14th, 1975, Heart of Markness. Enjoy. I'll see you in about 12 minutes. Meet me in the middle 
Well, upon sufficient reflection, uh, maybe it wouldn't take me 90 minutes to play it. But I bet I could pull it off over a weekend. That was great. Oh my god, that was good. I love hearing Bonzo. I love hearing Bonzo talk, even though it's it's clear, but I can't quite tell what he's saying, other than there's the slightest, slightest something. Very slight. Um, it, it, it's amazing. Um, I hope you liked it. It was super tight, super good. Um... They didn't venture off as much like Bonzo didn't do too many little fills and little little tricks or, or uh, uh, syncopations like he does later years, like in 77 when they get into it and really get coked up and wild. Um, probably because it's a new song and it's tricky. If, if you've ever heard the, the um, bootleg recordings of the rehearsals and demos of this song, like when they're actually writing it and pulling it together... It's funny because Bonzo is actually yelling at them, going, we have to have a count. It's going to be like Black Dog. If we don't have a count, then we're going to be fucked. Um, I can't play it because studio and uh, demo shit is, is legally iffy, and uh, I don't I don't want to be legally iffy. Um, you know, in or out <laughs> for me. But um, I like this because jonesy is ridiculously prominent in it and he's tight with bonzo and jimmy is tight with them both there, there's a real different dynamic in 77 than there is in uh you know 75 and earlier um jimmy jonesy and bonzo are a unit in this show and um to a degree, it starts to fray a little as the, the tour rolls on because of the, you know, debauchery. Um, but they're all tight and they're playing off each other. And it's 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 so deeply satisfying to listen to. And I hope you found it as such, you know, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I. So, um, all right, babbling has started. You can tell what I was doing while the song was playing. Um now, for the second song, I was going to play Since I've Been Loving You because they only did it a couple times on this tour, and this is the last tour on which they play it the way that everybody likes it to be played uh, before they went into that rambling, slow, basically T-for-one tempo and vibe, but Since I've Been Loving You as a song. And Jimmy, I mean, uh, he's not that. He's not the Since I've Been Loving You Jimmy after this tour. He just, he just isn't. Um... So I had that all queued up and ready to go, but I thought I think I played that when I played the Seattle show from March 21st, way back. Um, and in any case, I uh, wanted to play. It, it was another long song too. I mean, uh, in my time of dying it, it is is pretty long. So what I wanted to do was, and I mentioned this last podcast the night before on the 13th at the Nassau Coliseum. Zeppelin closed the show with Communication Breakdown, and they had Ronnie Wood come out and join them, which is they rarely have people come join them on stage. And I think um, I think I've almost... No, I haven't played. I haven't played you all of the times people have joined them on stage, but I've definitely played almost all the times on the podcast. And here's one of them. Ronnie Wood... Um, of the Rolling Stones, although at this point he was still technically the guitarist for the Faces. And later in 75, he would join the Stones and do some recording for the Black and Blue album, which up until about a week ago, I hated. And then I listened to again with fresh ears, and I really like it. It's not great, um, but I like Black and Blue. I like the first Ronnie Wood Stones album much better than I like the last Mick Taylor Stones album. It's only rock and roll. Just never did it for me. It has some good stuff, and the, and the song Short and Curly's is hilarious. But um, Black and Blue is good. I like it. It's really cool, and I'm glad I gave it another shot because it's been decades, and um, I, I've, I've been depriving myself. So, anyway, Ronnie Wood and Jimmy Page. And um, if you've seen the pictures, there's pictures of Ronnie and Jimmy together from um, this time. With um, hanging out with 
Linda Ronstadt and Joe Walsh. And Robert's around there, too. I think you've all seen those. I think they're Neil Preston photos. But, I mean, if you've seen Zeppelin pictures, you've seen those pics. And I'll probably have one of them up on my website, heartofmarkness.com, when I post this show. So, Oh, and and, uh, the whole show is available right now on Heart of Markness because, I don't know if you know, if you're a new listener, welcome. Uh, I post the entire show or as much as is you know extant of every show that i feature so even though i play only a couple songs in the course of a podcast you can get the whole show should you like it uh, on my website for free it's just shared all this stuff is shared i got it for free you get it for free that's how it goes so go hardermarkness.com enjoy it but before that let's listen to this communication breakdown it's the last show of the night. It's a little shambolic. Um, I even think I hear Bonzo fuck up. Keep an ear open for that. Nothing horrible. Nothing horrible. I think he tries to do something with his bass drum, and, and you know either the rest of the band doesn't catch it, or it's a legitimate whoops. You know, it happens. He's human, although demigod, but still part human. Um, and it's also a little weird because, I mean, anytime you just jam with somebody... Ronnie doesn't know the song. You know, remember at Live Aid when Phil Collins played drums? Everybody thinks they know the Zeppelin songs until they're playing the Zeppelin songs. And then you realize you don't know it all the way. So, I mean, it it meanders a little bit, but it's super cool. It's super fun. And that's the thing. It's fun. In 75, Zeppelin, we're still fun. Um, And it's another soundboard recording. Although it's not quite as amazing as the, this show, um, it's definitely, I mean, it's right up there. Maybe you won't even notice the difference. So here you go. Communication breakdown, February 13th, 1975, Nassau, New York, with Ronnie Wood on guitar, along with Jimmy and the rest. So enjoy. Hope you like it. See you in a little bit. Bye-bye. Communication breakdown.
Thank you very much, Mr. Ron Wood. And thank you very much, you. <laughs> Wasn't that fucking great? That was amazing, actually. That was amazing. And what impressed me the most is Ronnie Wood keeping up with the band and realizing how empathetic and sympathetic a player he is. Because, I mean, for the 80s and part of the 90s even, I mean, he was not this good. His He, he had some issues. I mean, some serious dependency issues and his playing, at least to my ears, went downhill. Um... If you watch him on the uh, December 9th, 1983 Arms Concert video, which you can watch on YouTube, uh, he comes out at the very end for the whole Goodnight Irene thing. And, I mean, Jimmy was a wreck. For sure. Um, he was. That was him starting to claw his way back. Um, but Ronnie was a disaster. As far as playing, I mean, he was playing simple shit. Simple, you know, Good Night Irene is, is you can play something real easy with a straight pentatonic scale and sound just fine. And um, Ronnie was not pulling it off. And um, from I, I read, I think, in Spin Magazine, like the second issue ever of Spin, um, on the Tattoo You Tour in, in 82 when they were in Europe, he actually uh, got punched by Keith and was doing some ridiculous amount of cocaine daily, like 13 grams or something fucking crazy. Um, and was a wreck. Anyway, long digression, but at least on February 13th, 1975, he was fucking great. Because not only did he keep up with the band, keep in sync with the band, he and Jimmy actually played together amazingly amazingly well and riffed off each other and riffed together in ways that I, I have never heard Jimmy play with another player uh, like that before I mean I've heard him jam with Jeff Beck Eric Clapton um, Jesus Carlos Santana in, in 1980 was very very good and especially for 1980 Jimmy like totally came out of it and just kicked ass and was playing with Carlos on that level but it wasn't an interplay like this um, Ronnie just kind of molded himself to the band and made himself fit in, which is, I guess, why he, he worked with the Stones so well, is he came in and just molded himself to be what the Stones needed and what Keith needed. And, um, and thus, Black and Blue came out, and it was good. And then Some Girls came out, and it is amazing. Uh, Some Girls is one of my favorite Stones albums. Um... I mean, Exile and uh, Sticky Fingers, of course, are going to be the best, along with uh, Let It Bleed and Get Your Yaya's Out and Beggar's Banquet. But Some Girls is up in there. I would even go with myself. I think I'd have Exile, Sticky Fingers, and Some Girls as my top three Stones albums. Because Some Girls is just amazing, and Ronnie is all over that. Um, anyways, why are we talking about the stone so much? It's a Led Zeppelin podcast. Wrong. It's a Mark podcast. And Led Zeppelin happens to be the topic of most of these episodes. And Jimmy Page happens to be the topic of all of them. But what rhymes with Jimmy Page? Ronnie Wood. Oh, I just remembered right about this time, Jimmy and Ronnie were buddies. And they were, um, they were both sharing Ronnie's wife, Chrissy, who was gorgeous. But, um, yeah, it was a super rock and roll thing. And Ronnie was in that sphere for a while. I forgot about that. So I guess they were really good friends or, or rock and roll friends for a while. Anyway, that's it. That's the podcast. You heard your two songs. I'm not going to do three because we're already 36 minutes in. And, uh, you know, I don't want to spoil you. Anyway, next week I'll be back with who knows. Uh, it won't be this show um, anymore. I promise. I don't know what it'll be. I don't know. I, I, I read that a new 1971 soundboard had been released um, September 4th. 
71. And I think it had been released, or at least partially before, but I think the whole thing is out now. Anyways, if it's awesome, I'll play it for you. If it's not, I'll play something else. But in any case, uh, follow me on Twitter, Heart of Markness. Please, it's fun. I love hearing from you. And, you know, you have a, you have a say. <laughs> there's there's not a million of you yet out there you know i'm still in the in the in the uh dozens or possibly dozens of, of social media folks uh hundreds of listeners so that's rad but um yeah follow me on twitter heart of markness talk to me send me some cool stuff give me some ideas uh you know uh craig hey craig was uh, the one that said he liked last week's show and loved the sound and the performance yay and i'm like you know what i do too so let's do a redo of that and finish it out so yay everybody thank craig for the suggestion and follow me in the facebook group uh also heart of markness there's a lot of people on there too pop in pop out and it's different people than are on twitter for the most part so it's a different mix um and heartofmarkness.com is where I'll have the show, um, I'll have the podcast posted, a pic of the show, or maybe just that pic of Jimmy and Ronnie sitting together, um, as well as maybe a little blurb about it, and a link to the complete show, should you want it. And I think that's it. Twitter, Facebook, heartofmarkness.com. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much for listening. Honestly, I love doing this. I love the fact that this is getting listened to. And you know what? What I absolutely fucking love is when I post this, I mean, I'm going to do a mix down and then I'm going to post this on SoundCloud. It's 8.20 p.m. now here in Portland, Oregon. And um, once I mix it down and get it posted, it'll be close to nine. And then I watch, and because I'm ridiculously narcissistic in vain, I refresh and see how long it takes before someone listens. And usually someone starts listening almost instantly. And um, within a few minutes, there's like four or five. And it just is, it blows my mind because I'm like out there in the world somewhere. I probably don't know all of them. I probably know one of you in that first initial thing. But it's just people, boom, all over the world can suddenly access this and it's there forever and ones that i did in the past it's there forever and it is crazy cool as are you as robert plant told you so thank you and good night see you next week